and I'm the one who first girl escaped from the captivities with a baby girl. Uh, she's three months and three weeks. So I escaped in year 2016. So I just did two years and months in the captivities. The only thing I can remember in 2014, we are all in school writing our first SSC examination before Boko Haram come and adopt us and move with us to the Sambisa forest. So that's where they keep us there in the bush. Amina. Same question. What are your Jumai? This Amina. Sorry, forgive me. I'm Jumai Mute by name. I'm part of the Chiba girls that are adopted in 2014. Twenty fourteen. <laughs> At that day, I was so afraid and worried because of what happened to us. And when I remember, even I released, I came out from the captive. The thing is. This so hard for me but sure yeah, everything is well for me now so in, in 2014 had you ever heard of boko haram before they picked you up i i did not heard about them before just they come with unexpected had you heard about Boko Haram and their activities, Amina? Yeah, before 2014, we were here about Boko Haram uh, and there have been that some school and destroyed schools in Bono State, uh, like Bama School, Kwandega, uh, and other schools they have destroyed, and we have student who came from that school and joined us in GS Chibok. So before 2014, uh, to, we don't even think that they will come to Chibok at that time. So we are living happily. We don't think about such thing could happen in Chibok at that time until 14 April. And what we have been taught from our teachers used to tell us that any time we heard about Boko Haram and the, we don't know in case maybe they will come to our place, but when we hear anything about Boko Haram or something like that happened in the town, we should not be worried. Do not come and do anything harmful to us. And so your teachers kept reassuring you that you are safe in school. Yes, and if in case they enter school, they are not going to do something for us. Maybe they could destroy the school just and leave. So we should not be worried. Nothing will happen. So we are taught like that. So we couldn't do anything until that day and they even came we think that something is going to do like that like usually they used to tell us but until we see they entered our school and packed us Jume, do you remember the journey from school into some happened that day just they enter like they claim for us that they are a soldiers they come to rescue us, nothing will happen to us. But we don't know that they are the actual people. And well, were they dressed in military uniform? Yes, they are with AK or they are with AK and Kaki soldiers. They were and they came, they say that they are soldiers. Girls come out, let us rescue you, nothing will happen to you. That's and we we don't have the experience about what is happening from that 
time and we came out from where we are in our room and gathered together. After that, they start asking all some questions about how they destroy some other school. We, we don't know they're the people. But later on, they ask us about our students who are boys because we are mixed with boys and girls. Of questions will be asking where are the boys or what yes, exactly? where is the hostel for boys? But we told them that they are not staying in school that day. They will be doing so that when they come to school, they will go back to their home. Only girls are staying in campus. So that in think, itself is a bit strange, isn't it? Um, was was that sort of normal that you have a mixed school where the girls are in boarding and the boys are their students? Is that sort of was that always the way your school was? Yes. Okay. Is the combined school where they are doing so bad when they are staying in campus? Okay. So they ask you questions. Then what happened? And we respond that. The boys are not staying in school, but they think like we are lying to them and they're starting asking some. Maybe, I don't know, they, like our relatives are part of them. So they say we should tell them the truth about the boys. And we say that the truth we have, they be doing so bad, they are not staying in school. So bad is an exam, right? No. What is so bad? Just they are coming in school and go back, back for the okay. children. They are off campus. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Uh, so, so they ask you all these questions and then, then what happened? We are responding to them that is the truth we are talking, we are telling them that the boys are doing this, but they're stating like we are telling them lies about the boys and they ask some of them the guys i think that guy is part of chibok guy and the guy told the whole truth and they believe in us at what point did you realize they were going to take you out of campus um I mean, well after they have finished asking us some of the questions and we answer them and after they finished searching the rooms, they couldn't find any uh, male student in the school. So they just pointed two of girl among us to show them where the library is and store. And they asked us about matches and they say oh, we need matches and we see that we are not cooking. And they say, ha, you are not cooking. So how are you surviving? And we see that uh uh is our uh, food is f coming from government and they say that wow you these people you are really in jail see some people outside so far and you you are just in jail yourself so and this asks us that where is the machine uh, for making block for this school and we say that we don't know so they keep us they keep asking us a lot of questions about that machine and we didn't tell them the truth about where the machine it is. And they said that, okay, so we are going to take you out. So you have to follow us. And if you try any no signs to escape, we are going to kill you here. So that's how they, start, they said that we should follow them. So that's how we follow them out to the gate. So they just keep us there and start going to school. And some of them enter the hall, try to pack a uh, store, try to pack the food items. And they think that uh, the hall and the store is different, but is the same building. So some of them enter the store, try to pack, in, pack the food, and they just put that on this hall. So both hall and the store just catch fire so they just start shouting and calling them say that they should come out because the the store yet catch fire so that's how after they couldn't pack the food at them and they 
come out and they still ask us again about that machine. Where were your teachers and matrons while all of this was going on? Well, you know, before, for the first time, they did enter the school directly. They just come and pass our school into the town. And after, they didn't find anybody in the town because people are hearing them far away and people run to the bush to hide. Even the soldiers, they run and go and hide. So since they didn't find anybody in the town, they just come back and they start argue among themselves that there's no student in the school because at that time, uh, and it's like a strike or what should I call uh, we are not in school because of the incident of Wuhan. So we just go home and after two weeks and we just be called that all SS3, they should come to school so that they have to write their nepo and work. So school had been shut down because yes. there was concern about insecurity. Yes. And then your class was recalled back yes. to come and write exams. Yes. That's what you're saying. So were there any teachers with you on campus at the time of this um, raid by Boko Haram and the abductions? At that time, nobody. You were left alone in school by yourselves? Yes. Wow. Yes. Now, between them coming and eventually taking you away. Do you, ha did you, do you have a sense of how long that took? How many hours? You know, uh, the time they, they entered our school is nine for something. So after, before they finished, they are asking questions, finishing the school. Uh, and before we left Chibok Town, it's almost 1 a.m. So at least four hours of them operating yeah. happily. Did you guys try to raise the alarm? Were you able to reach anybody or nothing? We didn't meet with anybody. And you got into, did they have trucks? How did they transport you? Yeah, after they finished everything and they said, that, okay, they will keep us and wait for the ball, their boss to come from the town. So after their boss come and they still, they tell, told their boss that they found students in the school. So what are they going to do with the students? And the boss said that he's not come with his empty car and turn it back with empty car. If with us, they have to move with us and go with us. So that was how. And, and the journey itself to Sambisa, how long did it take? And can you remember what was going through your head as you realized that these men were taking you away? Um, do you mind? Mm, from Chiba to Sambisa, we trek like three days. Before. Walking on foot? Yes, it's with the car. Okay. And where we are going, we have our head tie and our shoes. We are be throwing on the road. Maybe we are be thinking that maybe some people will follow us to go where the, exactly where we are moving. So you were leaving markers along yes. the way. Yes. Right? Yeah. When you realized nobody was coming, how did you feel? Some people coming like our parents and some security agents follow us but because of their too much more than them and they have many materials of fighting they can't catch us because of the so you knew people were following yes so they didn't after. have the arms or the numbers to be able yeah, to take on the day after home. after we leave the chibo is the next day that's our parents follow us back and it's just only our parents that follow us and they met with one old man and he told them that you people uh, do you think that you can able to get your children from these people since you are only people follow them and you don't have any security following you if you know what is good for you you have you better go back to get security so that 
the people have organs that can fight this program. If not, you can't copy with them. You have to go back. So it's just only our parent that follows the next day. And, and we have a few people that can sort of shed light on the conversation that went on between, I think, parents and government. When parents pointed out that their kids had been taken and they knew exactly where they were. But just talk to us briefly about what life was like with Boko Haram if you can, if this is not too much trouble for you, too much trauma? Oh, according to what I know, uh, the life there in the Boko Haram's places, they just do their life like the way we hear people doing our life because they even have a many places calling this school place and have lots of places and even market too. Okay, Jim. Bangani wa. Bali ntambeki. Kukari ndeneke so njida suka kai kuhurina. Ya suka idaku. Mi suka chemuku. Mi suka gaya muku. Sumbu geku. Sunza geku. Taya ya suka che wazasa awra wae wazasa awra. Ba ama mba ki so magana. It is okay. Hmm? Okay, uh, after that, they just kept us and start teaching us the Quran. And after that, they just start asking us that uh, who, who is wish to convert to the Islamic or something. And they, at that night, uh, even Shekel too came and he explained us why he adopt us and he said that they don't want to hear anything like school continue in this Nigeria because school is not good. School is a taboo. So they don't want to hear anything like school. And he said again, he said that it's not that school that is taboo. It's what people are doing in that school that is taboo, which is uh, teaching children uh, subjects like biology, geography. It's it usually spoil children's behavior. So, and then they say that the only school they want to hear in Nigeria, they want to hear Islamic school, only Islamic school. And that one, they don't want to here like a combined school which is girl and a boy school so you might some of you was to amusa our own duty misaki a guy i'm gonna get a one they have treated us badly because of the religion. Some of us say there will be, but after all, they deceiving us that when we collect Islamic, they will bring us back to our parents. So from there, we agree to them that yes, we want our we want our parents. After we collect their religion, and they say that we did not have, we did not know how to read Quran so they want us to learn to how keep to keep you until you've learned right? yes so from there when we found out that they are just deceiving us we said we don't want to follow them just we want our parents we want to come back to our parents so they think that we are deceiving them from there they take some step that they didn't catch us because of religion things or some things like that. They catch us because to pay what government are did to them. But we don't know what our government are did to them. But after all, the Shekhan explained some things to us that because when they come to Nigeria and fight people, they the soldiers are catch, uh, catch their children and put into the prison. So we Chibok girls represent their children. What 
he told us after the, the treatment why we said that we don't want this religion, we want our parents. At which point did they start getting violent and insisting that you marry some of them? This marriage is, is not by force, but according to what we face there, they give us some violent treatment. Like when you don't want to marry them, you will be their slave. And when we say we don't want to marry, they will come with some people, like they will sell us, they will do some things to us badly. Some, so from there, some take fear in them. And they say it's better they get married to them than to do the punishment. But some take the risk to do the punishment. That's what happened. Yeah. Who came out first among the two of you? Amina. Okay. Amina, tell me your story of escaping Boko Haram. How did that happen? Well, for me, after they bring the rules that uh, um, they, they first start asking us with, uh, about to get married, they say that, okay, get married in Islamic religion since you didn't know everything about Islamic, about Islamic. So get married in Islamic, is it uh, good or bad? And we say that, yeah, it's good, but when is in a good time and when your parents agree, that's the good of get my but now this one that you are asking us is not good it's a taboo and it's that okay so after they bring the rules and i think that oh so if this is the rules uh i may use by different people so i have to choose one person to get married to so that i can be free and only one person so after the bring man and we discuss about and i agree to him and we get married so after we did two weeks and they just found out that i'm the chubo girls and the man they would bring he to he was adopted in movie at the time they entered movie so they said that they so were the man, let me let me clarify this the man you were forced to marry was also abducted yeah and was in the camp with them yes and they said that is the man that will be your husband yes okay so after they realized like that so they said that they want to separate us and there is one man said that no they they have they have no right to do that because they we didn't commit something to the religion so the only thing they will do they just bring some people who will always be with us to if we did something like escaping and these people will attack us or and bring us back so we can't able to get away to run so they just bring seven people to guard you yes okay. to guard us so anytime like we we want to go and fetch water or get firewood or uh, go and look for a soap in the bush so these people always uh Yes, following us. us. Yeah, following us. So until one day, and this man on the first day he went there that we had about to get married. He said that uh, I want to tell you something. And um, if you know that you have, if it was blood sister, if you didn't trust her, don't tell her about our planning. Me too, I'm not a real member of Boko Haram. I was adopted like you. So at that time, I didn't trust. I'm just thinking that maybe he wants to hear something and tell to the people. So I just say that, okay, as you can say, I heard you. So I said that he won't help me escape in the captivities if I wish. So I should not open my and tell somebody and i say okay so after we get married and he's starting pushing me to escape so because of the fear i had because i can remember there is some time some of my sisters tried to escape they all they, they also did three days they almost came out and 
these Boko Haram still attack there and bring them back. So they tied them. They spent the whole that night on tight. So they almost want to kill them. So because of we are begging them and we pray God help us and they say, that, okay, we have to promise to them that anytime we try to escape, they're going to kill us. So since that promise, if he pushed me to do that, I'm afraid. I keep telling him that it's not yet time. So on one day, this soldier went there to fight them. So they went there to fight them like three days and the four days remind one place and then they will enter where we are, which is the main center so where Shekau living. So that's where we are. So after that, and these people are starting uh, running to the bush. They say that uh, this uh, army has come to the bush and remain one place. They will enter the main center, so we have to move. So after that, and he tell me that, okay, this is what you can do. You can see that you are going to make your head to your sister so that if they allow you to pass, then me too, I'll follow you after that, then we can find our way to escape. So after I went out and they stopped me at the way and they asked me that, where are you going to? And I told them that I'm going to make my hair in my sister's house and they said, where are the people who used to follow you? Uh, this time you are going along and I see that I didn't see anybody so that's why I decided to go along and see that at this point you'd already had a baby yes yeah? so yes. you had your baby with you yes and you just kept walking basically you left the place and kept walking yes so after that they say that maybe I am um, trying to do something try to escape or something so they just say that I should go back to house so i didn't argue with them i just came back so after that after we hear these people are running no bogans are running that i mean it's already in some visa so even the people used to guide us they said that ah oh, my family my children so they left us so that's how we too started running like we are going to hide to the bush so after we just see the distance between us so that's how we get our own way and that's how we escape. So, what about you, Jumai? How did you get out of the hand of Boko Haram? Mm, me, I'm rescued from the promise government made to them. I'm part of 82 girls. But me, I'm part of... They did some things for us there. I have Bible there. And we are not doing the uh, Islam, and they think that we are the one confess some of our girls not to do the religion. We are 22. They carry us to Shekau that they should punish that she should punish us because of the Bible <coughs> we are being reading there. And from there, God do the miracle. And he says, you don't want us to do religion, Christian religion in Sambisa. When we want our parents, she will, he will come to talk to Nigeria government to come and collect us. And he said that we should sign some papers that one girl, one Boko Haram from prison. But we girls, we didn't agree about that agreement but we signed that we want our parents and from there he said that we must sign this paper that even them they want their children so he wanted an party. exchange yes a change was right but we disagreed with them so from there they keep us different from the others that didn't hear about the news <laughs> I mean, you, you are surrounded by men who are clearly crazy, who yes. are armed, who you've seen evidence have the capacity to kill. What gave you the courage to resist? Serious. From there, I have courage because of I have my religion Bible with me. I am reading always. And there is some verses when I read, give me courage. 
after they say that we should get married or oh, they will give us some punishment me i'm thinking that how can i get married to these people who capture me from my parents and keep me in this bush who will correct my blood price in this bush and um, i'm so discouraged i'm so worried i say and even i look at them how they are living how they treat some people how they kill some people without fearing god in them and be thinking that ha i can't do this so better to do this punishment than to do but i keep in mind that one day i will have my way and there is things um i'm interested in getting a sense of what life has been like since you came back that journey to recovery to sort of becoming part of society because i know that we've heard stories of some of the stigma that has been attached to some of the girls that were abducted and particularly for you mm -hmm. um because you know you've had a child she's how old now she's 80 you say that with a smile you clearly love your daughter okay she's, she's 80 eight years now okay so what was the journey like from sort of coming out of that place with the baby talk to me through that um, that experience of coming out having to tell your story explain things and then rebuilding your life well how i escaped is so hard hard because i did one month plus before i escape because i don't know where sometimes we used to still repeat our back because of the push so is when you say the, one month you mean you were working for a month yes right, right. yeah so we start uh, moving in the same so is 4th april 2016 before we come out uh, 17 may 2016 so that's one month plus Yeah. and you can summarize it of that journey where you're now back in university trying to rebuild your life okay well when i escaped the first people i met i met with these people in dombwa uh called embanga so uh we just met them and banga I, is essentially militias just we are vigilante militias yes, yeah. yes. so uh, we just met them at the camp uh in dambua local government is still under bono state so i just told them that i'm the one who, um, among the chibo girls was adopted in 2014 and they said that are you sure and i i say yes and they said that okay we have to ask you some questions if you are sure about what you are telling us because since this thing happened there's many people used to come and deceive us so we have to know the truth so the the first thing they asked me they say that okay can you tell your name for us and i see that i'm amina alinkeki and they say okay what are you doing in that uh, day and that day? and i thought that I w we are we were writing our ssca exam and the first uh, on 14 april more uh, on 14 2014 on monday night uh, boko ha entered chibok and they adopt us i said that okay can you remember the subject you were writing and i say yes uh, so i just wanted to make sure you are who you say you yes. are and once they were sure what happened so after that they found out and i'm the red chibok girls they say okay can you able to know you are way to your village and i say yes of course and they say okay we are going to go to chibok town then we will take you to the the camp there and they will find some people in your village then maybe you will know them so after they took me to chibok and they bring some two people and the one of them is my neighbor and he's my brother to me too and the one person is uh, still my neighbor and he's 
uncle to me so and they said that yes of course she's our noble and this one she's daughter to me and that person said that this one is sister to me so that's how they took me to my village which is called balala uh, so after that and we came to our house and they said that we, i should not come out i should wait for them so they entered my house and called my mom out so they told my mom that she should wait and so they were asking her so i said ah, this one that i see my mom i can't wait to you to come and call me i just jump out of uh, out of the car and come and help my mom and before she turned out so she saw me and she started crying and i keep telling her that you you don't need to cry you have to be happy because you don't know that you can still see me you thank god you have been thank god that i'm alive did you have any problems blending back into your community because you had married and had a child was it a problem for you or was your family really understanding <laughs> yeah sometimes it has been a problem to me and sometimes it's not so it's a mixed bag where yeah. are you now now i'm living in yola okay and what are you doing in yola i'm um, schooling yola okay um do you know that same path for her slightly different you were rescued what happened after you came out of um sambisa and what are you doing now when i come from sambisa we went to abuja because we are plenty and government is the one rescue us after mm -hmm. after abuja we went back to school in yola we did like three months and we went back to our parents in village so you are back in chibok yes are you live in chibok yes and you are not scared to stay in chibok i'm not okay thank you so much <laughs> Okay, we'll take, I mean, we're running a little bit um, behind in terms of time, but I will allow a few questions if you have a Bible. And for the food, you know, when they enter town and destroy towns and they used to pack food in the town and go with it. And they say that they're not like government that used to keep their people in the jail without giving the food. Then they used to give food to people they adopt so and then after i came out i had some question in bono state some people used to ask me that when when we, you were in sambisa have you ever seen a airplane that used to provide the food for the boka and i said that well if there is me i have never seen it but oh, maybe yeah. it can happen that's what i used to tell them okay jumai do you want to add something came out and since please we can we have some silence please please, please. please. Uh -huh. since we are, came out uh, in medigree that's from there we are just separated and i don't know where he is whether he's still alive or not i don't know because there is some time i can remember i just asked about where he is it's not because i have something to do with him but a lot of people start saying something about me that hurt me even my parents they are angry at me at that time so i just say that okay i should not mind and i don't i don't want to talk to about him again i don't know where he is now and for the uh, day of the incident about our teachers, this one I can explain it in how size to better. So around kunu around masina nang ama at that time dene shine basa nang. So the akwai loko chinda abuze faroda muda yamang the sora yamata msimfita ebarua. So teachers in the snap staff. To ko da sun ji abun zai faru ko ya ba mu sani ba akwai ayyuka da sun fita dai ba wa sai sauran teacher jin suna kwashi kan suna fita cikin garin suna guduwa to ƴan mata suna mama ki cewa me ya faru ne teacher ji suna gudu so akwai daya daga cikin su har yazo yana kore ƴan mata a bakin pompo 
yace mu shiga cikin hostel so daga can ya kore amma ta sai yazo ya kulle gate na hostel din so da darin shikenan boka sun zo so a rena ma akwai wanda sun nema pass ta fi gida amma ba an hana su sanan kuma akwai a cikin malamin mu din sun kira yan uwa su wanda cikin makanta cewa cibo is not safe so when the sun gudu sun ta fi gida okay so let me just i can um amina ali keki by name um department of mass communication um in my second year going to three year so um the this i have is just a words of a position and for get to support to release some of my sisters that are still in captivity so the answer of standing for the of you today is to appreciate your support to the chibo girls i cannot say thank you enough to express how grateful i am we are so glad and blessed that we have such a dad which is his daddy with such care passion and selfless service i have been lucky enough to witness your care over these past years you have turned our negative situation into a positive one indeed you are such a nice dad to the society i sincerely appreciate you and thank you for for you for your time support and confidence in us thank you for your conditions your generous generosity and for inspiring us i am proud i am proudly grateful for a wonderful dad which is inside the ones again people his people his people and all the people that are doing work together to support chibok yes we are so grateful for you i feel very blessed for this opportunity i can't thank you enough for all the good things you have done for us in life thank you for generous donation you have done you have been nothing but helpful and supportive and it means more to us than you will never know finally for the nigeria president on behalf of chibok girls parents and other people that in captivity we are so happy and excited for his work through releasing the chibok girls sponsoring chibok girls to school we are so glad for that and we really appreciate his work for that but i'm reminding the government that there is still missing chibok girls that in captivity and we are still need the effort to release our sisters back so that we we all share this happiness we are having now and for their parents too because it's so boring when they see us and thinking about their daughters once again i'm grateful and thank you for those who have been a voice to the chibok girls people like dr obi honorable